Deadpool Wolverine has basically been out for a week now, so I think it's safe to talk about the cameos that we got in there and rank them from worst to best. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button, and if you're a fan of Marvel or just in general a geek, this is certainly the channel for you. I've made so many MCU videos over the last couple of days, and specifically, I just went to San Diego Comic-Con and got to be there in attendance when Robert Downey Jr. was announced as Doctor Doom. Like Roberts, like Roberts said. I have videos on that as well, but without further ado, let's do it. In last place is Cassandra Nova's crew. Now, this is just basically everyone that kind of runs under her. You have Sabretooth, Toad, Pyro, Azazel, Juggernaut, Lady Deathstrike. And for me, they're cool to see. But that is literally about it. I feel like they truly didn't do enough with them. Not that they needed to, but they kind of just were background noises. But literally, background noise. And they're in some fight scenes. Some of them get speaking lines, maybe less than five. And, and that's it. This is the Void has like the most random trash heaps ever. I mean, Cassandra Nova's crew was basically the most random group of people that you possibly could have. I think out of all of them, Sabretooth and Pyro were the best ones. And I think everyone will agree with that, mostly because Sabretooth, you know, got his head chopped off and specifically Pyro himself. I think had a little bit more meat to his character, but again, it's not enough to me for me to warrant them any higher on this list personally. So it gets me down to my number 10, and that is the Incredible Hulk. Mostly because you don't even see his face besides being in Wolverine's Blades, and you don't even get to see the fight break out. I think it's such a cool little moment to see, you know, him going through all the Wolverine variants and then landing on the Hulk. And I think it was cool to see the suit. I think it was cool to get the blade. That's such an accurate thing going back to the comics. And then, of course, you see the Hulk show up and just smash Wade into the corner. I would have personally liked to see the fight just go on for a tad bit. This is more of just one of those cameos that's like, oh, that's cool. See Angry Hulk once again? I'm down for that. Can we get more of that, actually, please? Coming up next is B-15. Now, th she shows up basically towards the end of it where she starts to find out what's happening with Mr. Paradox. And I've liked her character from Loki. I thought Loki Season 2 could have used her in a little bit of a stronger light, personally. But Deadpool uses her in a fun way. She comes in at the end, gets Paradox arrested, has some great moments with Peter Pool, which I was just laughing my ass off. And same thing with, like, Deadpool's banter. Like, her serious go-getter kind of attitude really pairs nice with wade wilson's fast talking and specifically same thing with how logan reacts to certain things and overall this was just a nice cameo there's not a lot to it but it's nice to see that the tva some of them high ranking members from loki showed up we get into my number eight and a lot of other cameo ranking lists i have seen this so much lower and I can understand why, but I also can disagree on this. Number eight is Happy Hogan. I think the entire opening 2018 set piece scene between him and Wade and Wade interviewing and wanting to become an Avenger is actually one of my favorite moments specifically from the start. For multiple different reasons, that moment is a crux for the entire thematics of the film of Wade wanting to find himself and wanting to find his purpose in the world. Seeing that rejection as a piece of this is one thing that I feel like a lot of us actually go through. And because, you know, in reality, like Deadpool, there's a a lot of reasons that he probably shouldn't be a part of the Avengers, but Happy Hogan and what John Favreau actually brings to that character, and just certain things that he says to Wade, like, you know, I found my place, you find yours, you know, and some of it's a little bit mean, but in reality, it is the truth, like, he was trying to join the Avengers for the wrong reasons, and overall, I really liked how John Favreau actually played off this, I think it was fun to see him, I like some of the things that Ryan Reynolds' as Wade Wilson says to him, like, specifically about being a chauffeur, and some of the mean comments that he lashes out on, Overall, I thought this was just a really fun scene to really start the movie off, and I'm happy that we got it. We get into my number seven, and this is the Deadpool core. You got Lady Deadpool, Cowboy Deadpool, Kid Deadpool. You got Baby Pool. You got Head Pool. You got Welsh Pool. I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm lumping them all together. It, this even includes Nice Pool and Dog Pool, mostly because, again, you get all of them in this one area. 
uh, for the most part, this most besides nice pool and dog pool, this is the one you see them all with. And I really found that they were just here. And I think for the context of the fight scene that comes up, and again, just seeing all the different actors they got. They got Ryan Reynolds' family in here. They got, of course, Blake Lively, his wife. They got freaking Matthew McConaughey to voice the cowboy one. And I, th and even Nathan Fillion does Headpool. And all these little elements just kind of, again, add to the fun. And this entire sequence of them talking about the multiverse and how he just wants it to be done. And then Nice Pool says that whole sequence of, I've been steadily liking this since Endgame. So many good laughs. Then she says, Uzi Tom, baby, and just goes off and he grabs Nice Pool and kills him. And the entire buildup of this to Wolverine holding up the dog and them stop shooting and then them deciding we're just going to kill all the Deadpool core. So many great things and a great conclusion to the scene as well. I like this one. I like the Deadpool core. Maybe I would have liked to see a little bit more of them, but it was fun. Speaking of glorious cameos, at my number six are all the Wolverine montage cameos besides one. I left one out separately. That's just my personal list. You can lump them all together if you'd like. But I found that the Wolverine cameos, whether it's, the, again, the brown suit Hulk one that I mentioned earlier when I mentioned Hulk, I thought was awesome. You have the future crazy haired version, which is like the apocalypse version, which I really like that they actually went with the missing arm in the way that he just was and the suit looked badass. The hilarious comic size Wolverine, which just really works out. Old Man Logan looked cool. You also have Patch, which is like one that a lot of fans have been waiting for to see forever. And I'm actually like, really surprised they've never actually brought that in to any of Hugh Jackman's films prior. Last but not least, you have un the Uncanny X-Men, which I thought was really cool to see the cross and the whole scenario of that comic book cover. Again, this was just a awesome montage that really pieces well together with once he finds the actual Wolverine. And then up next, we have Jennifer Gardner as Elektra, who is someone that I've never really liked her movie, but I liked her in Daredevil, and I liked her enough to be like, okay, Let's see what we're going to get next. And obviously her film wasn't a success, but I think that was kind of the point of bringing her into here as a character that deserves a fitting ending because of such a great actress. And I think, again, all those thematics of trying to find your purpose in this world stems to these cameos, too. And Electra is, of course, the first one that Wade actually ends up seeing once they are taken back to this whole facility or this little underground bunker base. And I found that Jennifer Gardner just played it well. I would have liked a couple more action scenes with her, maybe a couple more lines here and there, but I think for what the role was for and what the usage of it was, it was nice to see her back. And I think overall, she got that fitting ending. Then up next, I have X-23 Laura. Now, it is so great to see Daphne Keene back in here personally. I think she did such a great job in Logan, but specifically seeing her grown up all these years later. And then at the end, actually seeing that she got out of the void makes me very happy. And I'm curious to see how they use her in certain capacities in the future, whether it's in Avengers Doomsday or Avengers uh, Secret Wars, wherever they happen to use Deadpool and Wolverine next, I imagine that is where she will be used next. While she's awesome in her action scenes, and I so love that she had the sunglasses, such a great kick, and even the way that she like executes Juggernaut was fabulous, but it's the sequence at the campfire with Wolverine that really brings us to light, where she talks to him and has an, a fantastic conversation about what it means to be a hero. And I think without that scene, it really takes away a lot of different elements. And I think without that as well, it doesn't expand the development of this version of Logan that we just got. And we get to the next Wolverine cameo. And the next Wolverine cameo is someone that I, I wasn't going to bring into here and make separate, but I felt like I had to. And that is Henry Cavill's The Cavillnator. Uh, and personally, for me, this was such a great moment. It's probably the one-off. Such a glorious thing to see because this has been a big fan casting for quite a while. Hugh Jackman is the only person to ever portray Wolverine on screen. And then you get Henry Cavill showing up for a 10-second cameo. And he even does the hoo-hoo <laughs> with the blades coming out. It feels so right. And even Logan being like, we're going to treat you better than those fuck knuckles from down the street perfection next we have gambit now G channing tatum is gambit i have been like wanting to see forever and i have been always like, so sad that we've never gotten him in this role and i think for me there's so much build up to this you know i found out recently that he was actually casted in the last stand didn't work out he was then casted in x-men origins his schedule didn't work out and since then this is a character that's just kind of gone away from him. He even came out to Comic-Con one time to say, hey, I'm here, I'm here with the whole group, and still didn't happen. And ever since this movie was announced, and then I saw that Sean Levy and Ryan Reynolds had him in Free Guy, 
I very much came to the choice that th he's in this movie. He has to be. It would be like the most missed cameo not to even have him in here for less than even a minute. But he has some good runtime. And to see Gambit in live action like go all out. I know we've seen him before, but we didn't get a comic accurate costume. We didn't really get to see him fully in action with the cards and everything of that nature. And putting him in an R-rated situation makes those explosions even better. All these scenarios truly build up to that one big thing. And that is all the meta humor on Channing Tatum's Gambit. Him talking about, I think I was born here, you know. And even like his dialect coach and the accents, like there's certain things in there that Deadpool just says to him that just works so well. And this entire sequence was just phenomenal. I love seeing Channing Tatum as Gambit. I'm happy he survived the events. I hope we get to see him again in Secret Wars. But if not, this was a fitting conclusion and I'm so happy for him. We get into my number two and my number two is Blade. Wesley Snipes, because I never thought in a fucking million years we would ever see him come back to this role, and I would never thought in a million years he would come back in a movie like this with Ryan Reynolds, because there's been all those rumors that they hated each other for years after Blade Trinity, and all these certain things, and who knows if it was true, who knows if it wasn't, but... I love this entire cameo, because once he shows up, you have the awesome music that just plays right behind him, all the classic lines, I really like... <laughs> the the whole thing the ice skating line he has this curved blade the way he's just being badass and certain specific lines that they use with him whether it was like i don't like you and he goes you never have or even his first line that he literally says to deadpool about um <laughs> like i thought you were retired and <laughs> the whole way that that plays out is just so hilarious and so dumb and then when they're driving up to cassandra nova's place and he pulls out the bazooka and he goes there's only gonna be one blade <laughs> and deadpool looks at the camera it's so great and it's insane to me that we still don't have ollie's blade and i don't know if we're gonna be getting it now with the possibility of this happening but whatever happens there all I know is that I'm very happy that Wesley Snipes came back for Blade in this. And whether we see him again or not, he was so badass. And that was a fitting conclusion. Better than Blade Trinity, let me tell you. Honestly, the best cameo in Deadpool and Wolverine was the Human Torch, Chris Evans. I think for so many different reasons, it's such a short moment. And while most of the cameos in here, I felt service the story. This was one of the few that didn't like it serviced it in a way but because without him they wouldn't have known about the borderlands and the secret rebellion out there but the human torch itself having chris evans come back because the second you hear his voice under the hood you're like oh that's captain america you see him jump down and he's sitting there and then deadpool's getting all excited when he reveals his face and he's like oh my god he's gonna say it he's gonna say it. and we're all expecting this as an audience to say avengers assemble and he goes flame on and jumps up and the only thing bad about this cameo is i do not believe that pyro could be human torch but even then once he takes his powers he hits hits his head all that stuff gets messed up and then they're in the ball and they're having a great conversation again great exposition and then the whole sequence before cassandra nova goes zip and just kills him so funny and then it comes back in the end credit scene in where Deadpool has to set it straight that he did not get him dead and that he actually did run his mouth. And to hear all those vile things come out of his mouth at the very end was just hilarious. I loved this cameo. It was so much fun. And overall, I did love Deadpool and Wolverine. I've seen it three times now, and every single time, it just gets better. So with all that said, guys, thank you so much again for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And of course, until next time, stay classy.